the battalion has deployed in 2005, and most recently, of course, in April of this year. I'm very happy to inform you all that the uh, W1 Davis has recently commissioned and will be a captain in the battalion in the new year. Ministers, sirs, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honour and a privilege to command such men and women on so demanding an operation. Their professionalism and courage has been humbling, and I could not have asked for a better team or more selfless commitment. Thank you all. You are truly Welsh warriors. For me, it's a great honour to join you again, having last seen you as you were preparing to deploy on Salisbury Plain, with some really magnificent conversations under the trees with some of you, and I look forward to meeting one or two of you more uh, a bit later on. We're here, of course, to present you your medals, commemorating your outstanding service in Iraq on Operation Tele. But more importantly, we have come together today to remember those who are not here, those brave soldiers who tragically gave their lives and whose memory will, I know, live on through their families and with the wider regimental family, with the army and with their country. You have all, every man and woman, performed an outstanding job over the last six months. And for many of you, I know that is not the first time. Once again, you've been well supported 
by your Territory All Army mates from the 3rd Battalion of Royal Welsh, as well as by over 40 soldiers from the Black Watch, the Royal Regiment of Scotland, the security for Basra Province and for the Iraqi people. When you first deployed some seven months or so ago, as the furnace of summer was just beginning to bite, you were faced with a determined, dangerous and desperate enemy. You faced attack by small arms, rocket-propelled grenades, roadside bombs. Rolf's Drift Company more than lived up to the reputation earned by their gallant forebears, your gallant forebears, in the dust of South Africa, as they guarded key locations in the centre of Basra City. Now, of course, there are many differences between those days of 1879 and today. But what I sense is that there's a golden thread that links you with those men of the 24th. It was embodied this summer by your courage, your grit, and your downright stubbornness and your refusal to do anything other than impose your will on that enemy. And it was this steadfastness by you and the rest of One Mech Brigade that brought about a real turning point in our campaign in southern Iraq. A number of factors came together at the same time. But the sacrifices made and the courage shown by all ranks was quite clearly instrumental in passing security responsibility for Basra back to the Iraqi people, as we've done, as you know, for the other three provinces that we took responsibility for back in 2003. Thank you for your support, because without it, I don't think we could do half of what we're asked to do. I also think that you and the soldiers on parade would join me in thanking the people of this great country of Wales for all that they've done to help me welcome you home as the 2nd Battalion. It is the greatest honour for us to be standing here in the Millennium Stadium, having just marched through the city of Cardiff. It's very difficult for those who've not served, who've not done what we've done, to understand the pressures, the stresses and the emotions, but the very fact they show out for you means that they want to understand. So thank you to them. But of course, while it is right and proper to offer our thanks today, it is a day of memorial, a day to remember the tragic loss of five soldiers. Private Scott Kennedy and Jamie Kerr of the Black Watch. Corporal Paul Josco, Corporal Ryan Francis, Private Craig Barber of the Royal Welsh. Each and every one of them, those brave men, remain as examples to all of us. Their selfless commitment, their courage, and their loyalty. They gave their lives as they lived them, as soldiers of the Queen. And every man and woman here today owes them an enormous debt of gratitude for their sacrifice. We will remember them. We will salute their memory. We also owe it to them to look after their families, who bear the separation for the rest of their lives. To their families, you have my assurance that the Army will stand by you, no matter what and no matter for how long. We owe you that. I promise we will deliver. So thank you all for allowing me to be with you today. It is a real privilege. Thank you.
Yes, sir. 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 Y